Hello, it's Julio. This is going to be a small tutorial. I just wanted to go over modeling something like this in Substance Designer. I'm working on a scene that has other hard surface models that I've been making. So this one could be part of a panel or part of a trim sheet in the future. And this one's a smaller detail. It's more like a vent that I can put on a console or something like that. And then this one looks more like a speaker or a camera. Very techy. We can get started now. The material's already set up with the basic nodes. So basically the, the height is gonna be driving the normal and the AO. So right now I'm gonna start by introducing a shape, a paraboloid. And then I'm gonna invert it. The curve adjustment is very useful. Imagine it's like drawing a profile, um, say in 3D Max, if you're going to be making a cup, like a wine glass, you draw the profile and then you can use a tool like Revolve and it builds the geometry based on the profile. I want to introduce that cut that we see on the reference. And then in the center, it just has a hole, which is going to have uh, other details that I'm going to be adding soon. And here I'm just trying to refine the, the cut. I also want to build a little bit of a trim on top. Just to define the, the top of the model. So I'm going to be adding more points. And just making them so they don't have any curvature. And I think this is already looking good. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, softness at the bottom by changing the point type. And I think that looks better. It kind of eases in to the plane. The substance can, nodes can really get confusing if they're not organized. So I'm gonna try my best to, to keep things separated. So it's easy to see. So right now I'm gonna do the circle that is below this. And I'm just copying the same nodes that I already used, and I'm going to be adjusting the, the curves on the new one. And I'm going to be using a height blend to mix them both together. Right now I'm testing the height offset. And I also made the curve on the new nodes uh, flatter. That way I can see exactly how much of the height offset I need. And now that I have the thickness that I want, I'm going to be removing the points that are on the right side of this, of this graph. I'm going to move these to the left and it's going to be, you can see the change on the model. This new detail essentially has a chamfer on the edge and then afterwards it has a a hole as well in the center. I'm going to be creating a couple of points to create that. And the point that has a slant is the one that creates the chamfer. And right now that's what I'm trying to tune in in the 3D view. And I don't want to make the detail too thick. So I'm going to be dragging the point towards the bottom and it creates a new opening. And you can see on the edge it already has the chamfer based on the curvature that we draw. And right now, if I drag these two points, it creates more of a gap between this new detail and the old one. You can see in the geometry. I think I'm settling on having them merge together a little more smoothly. I'm gonna make more space. And now we're gonna be adding another shape. This time I want to do the cutouts that are in between and the circle. So you can see there's like a cutouts on both sides and one of them goes all the way through. It's like almost like a cross. So I'm subtracting this new shape from the circle that we just made. And it already created this cutout in the center. And now I just need to refine the thickness of it. It looks a little too thick.
and then I'm going to be working on the bigger cutout, which is essentially another shape. So I'm going to be making that re rectangle smaller. Um, but right now I'm setting it up so it uses the subtract as well. And you can see when I adjust the size, it changes the geometry. This way I get the real time feedback. So I'm just going to adjust the size so it doesn't fully cut through the whole piece, but kind of halfway or a little more than that. Just a little more fine tuning there. I think I'm settling on this value. Now that this section is built, I'm going to put a frame on it. Keep things clean. Now I'm going to be working on the details that are on the sides. So first they are elevated and then they are cut out. So I'm going to create that elevation change. So there's, um, and for that, I'm going to be using a gradient. It's going to be the linear two. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to invert it. I want the raised details to be on the sides. So I'm going to be adding a new shape. And um, the height blend. This shape is going to help me determine how much of the height offset do I need. So I want this detail to be... I want it to start off a little closer to the top edge. Then the gradient is going to be helping us cut the dimension away from this and reveal the details that were already there before. Gonna blend it with the gradient. Multiply and just kind of move it to the sides. So by adjusting the curve, I'm going to be altering the shape of this um, extruded detail on the side. So it gives me a lot of definition on that gradient that used to be soft. So now I'm just going to be adjusting the, the thickness, the height of it, and how close to the center details does it get. I have my reference as well on my other screen, so once in a while I'll slow down and look at the screen to try to figure out exactly where I want to place these details. So right now I'm trying to do a little bit of curvature at the bottom. That way it starts off a little more softly and similar to the one on top. So instead of being, uh, it has the little handles to create the curvature there by changing the point type. I'm liking the way this is looking and if we want this to be smoother uh, the future we can always add a blur or just adjust the height offset a little bit just looking at the reference I'm going to be trying to model the cutout that you see in the center of this detail and with that, I'm going to be adding a new shape. If you notice on the reference, the, the shape has uh, rounded corners. So I'm still going to be starting off with a rectangle. And by setting up the nodes, I can already see the feedback on, on 3D. This will help us fine tune the details. I'm going to go back to the original detail, the original curve. I'm just going to adjust the angle a little bit. That way it goes in closer to the center. Also gives it a little more space for the new detail that I'm making. 
I think it matches the reference a little better too. So I'm going to push this forward and adjust the height of it. It's a little lower now. And then the cutout so it's not as close to the edge. So now I'm going to be rounding off the corners of that cutout piece. To do that, I am just need to blur it first. And then use a threshold note. And that rounds off the corners. And the amount of rounding that it takes, it depends on the blur. So the more intense the blur, the rounder the corner is going to be. This also ten has a tendency of making the shape bigger if I use threshold. So I'm going to be scaling down the shape so it matches the original cutout a little more. But now it has that curvature as opposed to just being a rectangle. I think this uh, top portion is already looking like it's finished. There's just another detail that it, that it needs, but I'm going to be doing that towards the end. So for now, we're just going to frame it. Looking at the reference, I still need to do the, the details that is in the center. I'm not going to be doing the coiling because that's uh, that's on the z-axis. And we're now we're just working with a flat texture. So I'm adding another blend and creating a new, a new shape. I left the shape as white. I'm just trying to tune in the, the offset that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to blend it in with a new shape on subtract. And it's going to be a disc. It's going to be cutting out another hole in the center of this. And this is set to subtract. So I'm going to be adjusting the scale of it so it goes inside. And now we have that third layer, you can say. It's the lowest part of the model. And on the reference, the, this section has a cutout that I'm going to be making. So to start off with the similar radius than the cutout itself. I'm going to use the same shapes and just uh, use a subtract to create this ring. And I'm going to blend it into the previous result and see uh, the thickness of it. I'm just trying to adjust the location. So I want it to be a little more distant from the, from the inner edge. Something like this can work, so I'm going to be uh, adjusting the depth of it. So these are the the kind of the circular details that you see, and it's cut out into four sections. But right now I'm just trying to define the thickness and the depth. And to create that separation, I just need to subtract a few shapes from both sides, almost like a cross that is uh, cutting out from both sides. So something like this can work and I'm going to transform it to rotate it and then add them together. That way we have two. So blend and then add linear. And then I'm going to be subtracting this new shape from the previous result. And now you can see it's no longer a complete circle, so it's cut onto four. One thing I need to do now is uh, give the edges a little more roundness. So one thing I noticed in the reference that it's not a sharp edge like I have right now. So I'm adding a blur. 
And this time I'm going to use a histogram scan and set the contrast all the way up and then adjust the position. A histogram scan gives me more flexibility so I can make the overall detail thicker or thinner. I think something like this can work. So right now I'm just organizing things. I like these kinds of exercises. They, they're a good way to get familiar with Substance Designer and just think up about modeling and the stages that you would take similar to box modeling. You start off with a bigger shape and you kind of work your way uh, towards the smaller shapes and smaller cutouts and just doing things in a orderly fashion. This way you can add and subtract uh, the details from the model. And then at the end, everything is connected together and, and consistent with the, with the result that we wanted. And this kind of detail, it's very interesting to look at, but it's somewhat generic. And that's good because it can be added to many props or many different kinds of textures. It can be part of a weapon, it can be part of a console, like a camera or some prop in the environment. Right now I'm seeing that some of the edges have a little bit of aliasing, so I'm trying to find that inner circle so I can fix it. And I'm going to be adding a bevel to it. I think this is the one, the one on the right side. Little shape. So if I add a bevel, you're going to notice that the circle in the center gets smoother. So I'm going to be adding it by a very small amount. And now you see the, the edge looks clean not fragmented anymore and overall the the proportions are looking good it's not exactly the same size when it comes to how relative the details are from one to the other but I think this is not like when you're modeling a face when you're modeling a face you want to get the proportions right so it looks like the person but with a detail like this there's a lot of room for interpretation I think in this exercise, I mainly want to create the overall details and the layering and the structure and not worry about having every little detail match that reference that I'm seeing. So now I'm going to be creating that final cutout that you see on the reference. And for that, I'm going to be using the same uh, one of the shapes that it's already made and just making it smaller by using a subtract. But I think here I need to change it so it doesn't tile. And now the shape is showing up on the left there. Because I don't know how big it needs to be, I need to start subtracting it and then I can adjust the size after that. So on the reference, there's just a cutout that is very thin. It's almost like, a, like an outline that extrudes in. And for this, I'm just going to be using the edge detect on that shape to get the outline and then uh, blurring it up a little bit. That way the extrusion is not that harsh. And I'm going to be blending it with, with one of the height maps that has most of the information already. You can see the cutout on the, on the height map on the bottom. So I just want to to be more on the left so it's closer to that little rectangle that it's cut out almost at the edge of it on the left side and then once i have it in position then i can adjust the opacity on the blend thank you very much for watching i think these exercises are really beneficial especially on the days where you don't have too much time you can just save these to your library and eventually when you want to create something more complex, you'll have a head start. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.